All right, what's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and I just wanted to do a very quick recap of the fight last night between Brandon Figueroa and Mark Masayo, okay? Brandon Figueroa wins a unanimous decision against Mark Masayo, right? Went to full 12. You guys know I did a breakdown on this fight uh, earlier last week. And I predicted Brandon to get uh, a late stoppage in the fight. You know, I thought that um, his his out his punch outwork his punch output would be too much for Mark Masayo, and um, I didn't get the the bet because I had hedged it with Mark Masayo winning by uh, a knockout. You know, because of his punching power, he had a huge puncher's chance, and you know that Brandon Figueroa doesn't have the best defense. But I lost it all because um, it, did, it did go to a decision. And, I, you know, I, I was hesitant about that. I was thinking about picking Brandon straight up. But I want to make some a little bit more money. And I picked him to get the stoppage in. And to be honest, there were points in a fight where I felt like he was going to stop Mark soon. There was points where he did hurt Mark. Um, but Mark and his survival tactics and the amount of holding that he was doing in a fight, he was able to go to full 12 with Brandon Figueroa. Now, a lot of people are disappointed with the scorecards. The scorecards were a unanimous decision for uh, Brandon. 117-109, 117-109, and 118-108. Um, I feel like the scorecards were a little wide, but not much. I personally thought that it was uh like maybe like a 116 to 110 type of fight like when, when i and when i say that it's because of the two point deductions in the fight um i thought it was eight rounds to four so that would have been 116 to 112 but with the two extra points deducted it was 116 110 so i'm not too far off with that i think the 118 108 is a little bit too much of a stretch but to be honest man to be honest it's really hard with those fights because it really depends on what you like Brandon was more consistent round by round. Uh, Mark was landing, you know, there were times where he exploded and landed a lot of combinations and flurries, and that would probably win some rounds. People would re remember moments like that when you land four or five big punches in a row. And but I felt like Brandon was doing, he, he was more consistent every round. Um, especially like halfway through the fight and going forward. I think he was more consistent every three minutes of each round, whereas Mark fought in spurts, all right? Mark doesn't have the stamina that Brandon has. Um, but what I will say is this. There were periods in early in the fight, and I think, I think Mark might have been winning the majority of the rounds early because he was landing some pretty heavy shots early and i'm not gonna lie as i'm watching them like whoa i don't know you know brandon can't keep taking these kind of shots because mark was landing all of the right shots the hooks the uppercuts the right hands mark was on the money with some of the punches he was landing you know i mean he looked incredible like the right you know the quickness the power you can see it brandon took it though brandon is 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 proven to have a phenomenal chin and he took the punches. He he was able to deal with Mark's power throughout the entire fight, you know. Um, and he never got really hurt or, you know, knocked down. Yes, he caught a good couple shots and he was buzzed a couple times. But he took the punches very, very well. He was never really, really hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I think, <coughs> excuse me, shout out to... Uh, Ryan from Boxing Gyms, we were texting a little bit this morning, and, and Ryan said something, a, a key thing that I noticed when I rewatched the fight this morning, because I was watching last night, but, you know, I was watching the, the the UFC card as well, and I was also watching the Chris Rock stand-up on, uh, on Netflix, so I had, like, three things going on at, at once. As I'm watching them, I'm watching the fight more, the boxing but I had to rewatch it this morning when it, they showed it again on Showtime. And Mark Messiah doesn't know how to pivot. And I, I don't think I realized that until he mentioned it to me. And now I couldn't unsee it. You notice that, you know, when fighters, you know, 
pivot with their lead foot and, and, and like to turn and spin around their opponents and, and you know, create new angles or, or, you know, use it as a defensive tool or whatever. Mark literally bunny hops around everything. So he goes to the left, what he goes to the right, like what he bounces back. He's always bouncing around the, his opponents to create new angles and new opportunities to land shots. He doesn't just step around you. He doesn't know how to do it. And, you know, another thing is, where is Mark's jab? Where is it? It's just not even, it's not there. You know, I think if Mark knew how to jab or like probe or know how to set, <coughs> do something more with his lead hand to, to be able to distract his uh, uh, opponents, he would be much better, you know, because to have that kind of speed, and to have that kind of power and be so explosive and not really know how to control distance at all, like, or not really just use that lead hand for anything, it keeps them very limited. And I feel like even with this loss, I still think that if he joins the right trainer, they can work on some of these things. You know, I think he needs needs to work on some of the basics because he should have won that fight. You know, um, with his power, I think that if he had fixed some of these issues he's had, he would have, he he can beat Brandon Figueroa. You know, and it's not like I have any um, like again I put my money on Brandon to win. I picked him to win. Um. And I don't have like I'm not like a, a more of a fan of one over the other, um, so there's no kind of bias there. But what I'm saying is I think he is very capable of being, if not the best at the division, but one of the best at the division. You know, because his speed and power, I see a lot of Manny Pacquiao. I see it there, but the difference is Manny Pacquiao covered the basics. You know, some of it from a technical and a boxing fundamental standpoint. And I think the longer Mark goes without having those things covered, he's going to have more fights where he's going to lose because these guys, more technical fighters, are going to beat him. You know, um, he beat Gary Russell, but he beat a very limited version of Gary Russell. And the fight was still very competitive more than it should have been. So with that being said, Mark needs to find someone that's going to teach him certain key things that he's going to need in the ring. Um, as far as the point deductions, when I went back and watched it, because I thought the point the deductions was a little too much when I first watched it last night. But I wasn't aware that the referee not only warned him twice leading up to the first one. But he actually went into his corner and after the seventh round and warned them again. Like, hey, yo, you got to stop with the holding. It didn't seem like Mark really cared about the point deductions. I think he was more just trying to survive more so than anything. And I think the amount with the amount of holding he did was the only reason why he wasn't stopped in this fight. You know, because if he didn't hold as much of he did, I mean, he did a good job at just smothering Brandon's punches, you know, and staying, you know, he would attack him, but he would, you know, he would we, he would tie up and clinch and, and wrap his arms around uh, Brandon con continuously in order to stop Brandon from throwing so many punches. So he did what he needed to do to survive, but it cost him the points. I think even without the point deductions, he lost the fight, in my opinion, based on rounds. So I don't think he really, because I think his main priority was to go another round. But when there was periods where he there was some space in between them, he would land some big shots. Um, and he would also catch Brandon coming in because Brandon, you know, even though he likes to move his head sometimes, um, sometimes he lowers his head as he's coming in, rushing in, and he caught himself with some uppercuts and some left hooks as he's coming in. Um, but if, like, Mark learned how to pivot and learn, like, for example, learn how to really throw a check left hook properly. 
he would be dangerous. I hate to see it say it, but I, I think he has <clears throat> the ability to beat most of these guys at 126. He just needs to work on some of his fundamentals, and he needs the right coach to do that. Um, Brandon, on the other hand, he's going to be a problem for everybody at the division. The problem is his fighting style, he's not going to go that long at fighting at this level because being durable is a key thing. And if he keeps to go on these fights where he's going against punchers and he's taking a lot of punches, yes, he's collecting wins, but he took a lot of punches from you, Lewis and Mary. Now you're up at 126. You took a lot of punishment from Mark Messiah. He was able to survive it. But the moment he becomes less durable, he's in trouble. Look at his brother, Omar. Look what happened to him. Once these fighters were able to hurt him, it was over. You know? Um, look at Jared Hurd. Jared Hurd lost, lost in the car. Once these fighters are able to hurt you, it's not gonna be it's not gonna matter that you throw a lot of punches. Um, because you're not gonna be durable anymore. And your defense is not is is probably it's probably one of your biggest weaknesses. So with that being said. With that being said, Brandon Figueroa, good fighter. Um, again, he's young. There's a lot of time, but how much punishment? I can't see him. I'm not saying that his career ain't going to last long, but what I'm saying is fighting at this level, how many years can he go taking this kind of punishment? You know, his offense helps his defense, but... You know, it could be a fight like this that takes a lot out of you. Just like I think Laura took a lot out of Herd. Yeah, Herd won the fight. But Laura took, put a lot of punishment on him. You know, Laura won the first six rounds and he battered him for six rounds. Laura just couldn't stop him, you know. Um, so anyway, that's my thoughts on these two fighters. Um, Ray Vargas is still the champion at WBC, uh, the WBC champ. So this was an interim title shot. So... Being that Ray Rog is lost at 130, he's still champ at 126. He's going to probably come back down and defend that title against Brandon Figueroa. Should be a very good fight um, if that is going to happen next. Um, there's still a lot of other fighters at the division. Uh, like I said, I just want unifications in this fight. But there's a lot of great fights that could be made at the division, all right? Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. Um, please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, share the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.